welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues down the news. Governments around the world are ramping up their efforts to ensure that investments are made this decade to begin aligning their economies and societies to the goal of reducing greenhouse gas emissions to net zero by 2050. Terence Freeman joins me to discuss what this means for South Africa. Hi, Terence. Hi, Chanel. Why is there this global net zero push? Well, governments around the world have made a commitment uh, in Paris to start reducing our greenhouse gas emissions at an accelerated pace because the ambition in Paris was to uh, limit the rise in global temperatures above pre-industrial levels to 1.5 degrees centigrade. But the commitments made in Paris weren't sufficient to do so. So there's been an intervening period and we know that the next COP, COP26, is due to take place in Glasgow, Scotland in November and that there'll be uh, enhanced commitments made. And uh, as part of that, a number of governments have already made pledges to get to net zero emissions by 2050. In the case of one of the largest or the largest emitter, China, that's a 2060 push. So there's this global, synchronized global commitment to try and reduce the flow of greenhouse gas emissions and ultimately reduce the stock of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere to get the climate uh, crisis under control. What does this mean for the future energy system? Well, it means that the future energy system is going to look quite different to what the current one looks like. As we know, in our own uh, economy, coal is a, a dominant force, mostly for electricity, but also for fuel. Around the world, coal remains a major source of electricity and fossil fuels in the form of oil and gas are, are primary drivers, especially in the mobility sector. So what we're going to see is over the next few decades, electricity is going to emerge as the main fuel. And that's because that has been the easiest to decarbonize in terms of the technology breakthroughs that we've had. So we've had massive breakthroughs in wind and solar. And therefore, in many countries, that is now the cheapest uh, way to produce electricity and it's clean. So that is going to be, that's why we're seeing this major scale up in wind and solar around the world. And uh, that, that is going to be the underpin of the energy economy. As some say that solar, solar will be the largest uh, uh, energy uh, source and some are calling it King Solar, whereas we used to have King Coal. And that where there are sectors that are harder to decarbonize, uh, so for instance, mobility, heating, cooling, and in factories to produce cement, to produce steel, these, some of these sectors can be decarbonized directly using electricity. So that's why we see the rise of the battery electric vehicle. So that's direct electricity. And then we'll see stationary battery storage in the electricity sector too. But there are other sectors that are much more difficult to abate um, and they will need intermediates. And what is emerging there is that uh, green hydrogen. So that's using electrolysis to split water into hydrogen and oxygen. That will be a, a, a important energy source which will be used either directly or indirectly. For instance, uh, we can use uh, green hydrogen to produce ammonia for fertilizers, as well as ammonia possibly to decarbonize shipping in the world as a fuel. And then we'll see also hydrogen being used uh, to produce cement and green steel, so as to try and decarbonize those sectors that are much more difficult or almost or impossible to decarbonize using the electrons produced by wind and solar. Is South Africa on the same net zero pathway? South Africa is definitely decarbonizing. So we're going to see a lot of our old power stations. So we've got a, a really old fleet of coal-fired power stations and we see it feeling their age now as the performance deteriorates. But a large portion of that fleet um, is going to start being decommissioned up until now, from now until 2030, about 10 gigawatts of that fleet will be dec decommissioned. And then the decommission will accelerate between 2030 and 2040. So we definitely will decarbonize. But if you look at our current uh, pledge to, the, uh, to COP26, it's still a draft pledge, but it has been released. We are not yet ready to make the leap to a net zero by 2050 economy. 
but we are definitely making an accelerated decarbonization pledge relative to what we've made previously, and we are on a decarbonization path. What are the risks and opportunities for South Africa to move in this direction? Well, I think the main risks lie inside the coal value chain. So we know that a lot of our businesses uh, and uh, companies, as well as uh, workers and communities are linked to the coal value chain. And that, uh, we need to find ways of ensuring that as we transition from, uh, from this coal value chain to a more renewables led energy system, that no one is left behind is the terminology that is being uh, gaining traction around the world. And especially coal workers and coal communities need to find, there needs to be a way of ensuring that jobs are found for, for them and their families. And this is an important point. It's not just about the fact that the new energy economy, there are indications that there are more net jobs. It's whether those jobs that are going to be lost in the coal value chain whether those people can be found direct work, either in directly in the energy economy, in rolling out solar and wind, and in operating and maintaining that, but mostly in building it, but also in sectors aligned to the green economy, uh, and also to the things that will open up around, uh, around that the decommissioning of the coal-fired power stations. So we see Eskom's got a major push to, as they decommission, the first uh, four power stations that are up for decommissioning to do this in a way that creates employment opportunities directly in energy or in opportunities surrounding uh, the, those, those power stations, for instance, in agriculture. But the, uh, so that is a risk, but the opportunities for South Africa far outweigh the risk in the sense that we have better solar and wind resources than most other countries in the world, plus land. Therefore, as people progressively build their energy systems or electricity systems on solar and wind, those countries with better resource advantages are gonna have relatively cheaper uh, electricity. Once you have cheaper electricity relatively, you are in a good position then to capitalize on the fact that electricity is the fuel of the future and is gonna be the dominant fuel and can be used uh, both to decarbonize directly and to create uh, spin-offs uh, into say, for instance, battery electric vehicles. And we know we have a large automotive industry that needs to transition from uh, internal combustion engines to EVs in, the, in, in quite urgently, because as we can see that uh, RCE uh, cars are not going to be in demand uh, in many economies around the world. But there's also other opportunities, especially in the green hydrogen space. So if you've got these cheap electrons that you can combine with water to produce green hydrogen, you in a relatively good position versus those countries that aren't, they don't have the resource, the soda and wind or the land to do so, but they need the green hydrogen or they need green hydrogen derivatives. So this is a huge opportunity for South Africa to scale up, to produce green hydrogen, to produce green hydrogen derivatives, whether it's, whether it's ammonia, whether it's carbon neutral jet fuel, uh, whether, you know, whether it's green steel and really become, uh, create a whole new export industry with hundreds of billions of rands potentially for South Africa and many, many uh, thousands or if not hundreds of thousands of jobs in those value chains. So the, the, the risks are there and the opportunities definitely, but the one risk that I must add is that as the world and especially as the financial world moves to decarbonize and moves away from dirtier solutions. South Africa, if it were to cling to those, is going to find those finance sources drying up. So this is a major risk. And then if we are seen as, as carbon heavy and our exports are seen as carbon heavy, we could also find that our products face some form of carbon tax tariff at the border. So we really, there are risks, um, and that, but they are manageable if we have a plan and we have a vision um, and the opportunities definitely outweigh the risks. The problem for South Africa is we need to, to get to the point where we have the frameworks in place to make sure that uh, we manage the risks well, ensure that coal value chain workers and communities and companies, small businesses are protected in some ways as, as things taper, but then to really take advantage of our our new gold, which is really our wind and our solar, uh, which can then 
uh, trigger a whole lot of other green economy opportunities, most the most notable being in the, the production of green hydrogen. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis. Also, don't forget to listen to the audio version of our engineering news daily email newsletter.